So on this channel, I talk about words, why I love them, what I love about them, but I also like to talk about how words can hurt, how they can be used or misused to build barriers between us, how they can foster misunderstandings, stereotypes, cliches, and basically to discriminate against people as well. Uh, and how can we use words in a much more constructive way? Is that possible? I also like to take a close look at the at their etymology, at their journeys, you know, all the journeys that they go through uh, over time. And I am also very interested in the word of the year, uh, Oxford word of the year 2022, which has just been announced. And that word, which has been chosen by public vote, and almost is like a landslide choice because so many people have voted for particularly for this term concept uh, is an interesting one it says so much about the time we're living in and that word is goblin mode so basically you will hear people saying oh today i'm in a goblin mode you know i'm going goblin mode i don't want to do too much i don't want to leave the house i'm in a goblin mode and i want to take a close look at what exactly that means as you can imagine, Goblin Mode is mostly the creation of the online world of digital platforms. It is, um, it's a relatively very recent, very modern term. Uh, it, has been, it has come into usage in 2000s, but I think it's after the pandemic, with the pandemic, that the concept picked up. So I'm going to take a close look at it. But before I do that, may I remind you that the word of the year um, last year was a very different one. For instance, the Oxford word at the time was vax, or the Collins Dictionary word of the year was NFT. And the year before that, it was climate crisis or climate emergency. In 2013, for instance, the word of the year was selfie. And I think back then, the zeitgeist was completely different. It was a different world. And the reason why I mention this is because I think goblin mode says so much about the times we're living in, the mood that we all are affected by somehow. So what happened since then? Well, of course, the pandemic happened, COVID restrictions, lockdowns, but also climate crisis accelerating in front of our eyes. It is happening. But also there's all these talks about a nuclear war, the possibility of an escalating tension and, and so on and so forth. So it is a, it's a difficult time to be human. It's a difficult time to be young for young people. It's a difficult time to be alive. And many people feel overwhelmed by all that's going on in the world. And I think that is directly related to the popularity of this word, the goblin mode. Now, as you know, goblin is a fantastical creature. It's an imaginary creature that usually we find in folklore or in folk tales, for instance, in Irish, English, Scottish folklore. Basically, actually, all across the world in folk tales, we come across goblins. Um, in some stories, it's portrayed like an elf, mischievous, ugly creatures living under the ground, but a fantastical creature. But I think the underlying um, emphasis here is laziness. Like you don't want to participate too much in the public space. You really don't feel like going out. You want to stay in your own little hole, you know. Um, maybe there's a self-indulgence there as well. So, and that, that is the, um, the important bit to understand the time we're living in because I think many people feel like when so much is happening in the world, you really don't want to go out anymore. It's just too much, you know. Um, every day, so many things are happening and the speed of things is just too fast. This is in direct contrast with all that the image of all that perfect world that social media platforms were, would create uh, only a few years back. For instance, on many digital channels, we would see these pictures of perfect lives, you know, women multitasking, men multitasking, doing lots of things in, in a very short span of time. Goblin mode is the exact opposite of that. You slow down, you take it easy, you don't rush, you know, why the haste, why the need? to speed up, it doesn't matter. So I want to talk about its background as well. Also, its pros and cons. 
May I tell you that I think goblin mode, even though as a concept it sounds very new, but the idea, in my opinion, is not that new at all. And it immediately reminds me of this important book that was published in 1883, written by Paul Lafargue. It was called The Right to be Lazy. Now, Paul Lafargue is an interesting thinker. He's a socialist. He also happens to be the son-in-law of Karl Marx. He was a leftist thinker, but he was also very critical of the labor movement of the time. And in order to understand his worldview, we need to bear in mind that he thought um, working, taking part in the capitalist system was oppression, you know? So why do you try to increase the hours of work when you can decrease the hours of work? So he defended um, people's right to be lazy. And, and the hours that you can spend for leisure, for yourself, for your family, just, you know, walking around, those were the precious hours. But the rest, in his mind, was tantamount to slavery or oppression. So, coming back to the goblin mode, uh, there's something similar there, you know, instead of working more hours, how do we reduce those hours of work, how can we spend more time for ourselves, and I think partly it is, of course, because we have experienced the pandemic, uh, it's very understandable that we're thinking, rethinking about what does it mean to be happy, what does it mean to work, what does it mean to be successful. So I think it's good that we are doing a lot of rethinking right now. That is very understandable. There are good things about the goblin mode that I find very important. Um, for instance, to reconnect with earth, with nature, with ourselves, to spend more time maybe just enjoying a walk in the park, just sitting under a tree, appreciating the seemingly small things in life. And these are the things that, are, that cannot be translated into materialistic terms. They cannot be translated into money. Maybe the pandemic made us realize that actually these are the things that matter the most in life, like love and friendship and family. And as I said, just sitting under a tree, they matter. These moments are precious. So that side of goblin mode is something that I like a lot. I also like the fact that when you're in a goblin mode, you really don't try to achieve a perfect curated life you know, which was always artificial. That, that image that was promoted by social media uh, platforms of men and women always happy, always on top of their game, always perfect, you know, that was never real anyway. And Goblin Mode is very aware of that. So th these are the things that I like about it. But what I find dangerous is when you are too much in a Goblin Mode, I worry that one might say, you know what, it doesn't matter. There is a climate crisis, but what can I do? You know, it's already happening, it's big, I'm small, why bother? You can also say, you know what, yes, you know, women in Iran, women in Afghanistan, women all around the world, they're going through so much, but what can I do about it? Why bother? There's a danger of apathy that comes with pushing the goblin mode too much in that direction and that worries me and the second criticism that i have is that um, producing something you know creating something can also give us so much joy like writing a poem composing a song music or if you're a carpenter manual work creating a little toy a wooden horse you know all these seemingly small things that cannot be translated into some materialistic um, value immediately. They're so precious. And so there's a part of me that wants to praise creativity and productivity in that sense. And lastly, if I may leave you with this thought, I had this interesting conversation with my own mother, with my mother, and many women of her generation, of course, and many men of her generation, for them, it was a completely different worldview and a different ethics, right, wasn't it? It was always work, work, work. You have to work hard, you have to achieve, you have to leave a better world for your own kids. Many um, people of that generation, and especially many immigrant families, um, their zeitgeist was completely different. And I want to honor their experiences and I want to honor their stories as well. So let's celebrate Goblin Mode if it helps us 
to appreciate the seemingly small things in life, to reconnect with ourselves, with our fellow human beings and with nature. But let's also be careful about the dangers of apathy and of living atomized individualistic lives. I think we can balance it.